Yeah, that should be the right title. I'm Steve Sarno, and I'm the Democratic candidate for House District 67. I have lived in my home in District 67 since June of 1987. I'm a 25 year employee of the city of Clearwater, and I served as my local union's president since 1999. I am a social activist, I'm a union activist, and most of all, I spend time working on political and legislative issues that affect the constituents of District 67. My three main issues that I want to talk about quickly is number one, to increase funding for public education. We do, we have over 38 other states that spend more per pupil than we do. Also, I want to re-regulate insurance. Our insurance industry in Florida is out of control because we have pretty much decimated the office of the insurance commissioner and these people are ripping us off. We pay the highest property insurance rates of anybody in any state. In most cases, it was four times as much. A couple of years ago, we, we, we changed our EIP insurance on our auto insurance, and most of us have to save more than a few pennies in our premiums, but yet, we're forced to go to a, a, a forced to need medical attention to go to an emergency room. We're not allowed to choose the doctor of our choice, and that's wrong. And lastly, I want to see a great improvement in how we rebuild the infrastructure of our state, especially protect our water resources. I'm a proponent that I support Amendment 1 for wetland preservation and to buy property and preserve it, and Amendment 2 for medical marijuana. Thank you. serving on the uh, EMAC. That's the District Monitoring uh, Advisory Committee. I represent the North Chapter of the NAACP on that committee, and we're the guys who fulfill the obligations of the lawsuits that were brought against Pinellas County who failed to desegregate their schools for so many years. Our numbers that we saw, the statistics, the results of different opportunities that were tried, all did pretty well. But when 38 states continue to spend more money per student, you cannot get blood in terms. And with all the budget that we've done in the school system over the years, we're starving the public school system to death. On top of that, you have the issue of the, the rules that were passed that take money away from public schools, the money that maintains the buildings, the money that maintains the floors, the money that maintains the gymnasiums. All that money was siphoned off to support private charter schools. So, yes, there is a crisis in public education here in Pinellas County, and I would like to go to Tallahassee to represent you and fix that. It has to come from the top down. That's how you fix failing schools. As you've heard, the Constitution requires a balanced budget. That's the only reason why we have a state legislature. That's the reason why we have a part-time legislature and soon to be the third largest state in this nation. We cannot run the third largest state in the nation like Mississippi. And we've got to learn that we have to accept change. We can't brag about how little tax we pay because what that does is it simply causes hardships and eventually it's gonna work against us and people will leave with better opportunities. And that's another reason why we have to work harder to attract businesses here. Businesses don't want just cheap taxes or no tax. They want a place that they would like to live. They want a place that their employees would like to live. They want a place where they can find people who are well-educated, well-trained, and have a way to get to work. They don't want to spend $27,000 for a thousand parking spaces each 
They'd rather be able to be someplace where there's public education that brings the workers to their front door and provides services so they can run more than one shift. That's how you bring businesses to this state and to our district. The main reason why schools fail in Florida is because since 1999, we have been starving public education to death. Every year, we found ways not to fully fund education. Today, 38 states pay more per pupil for their annual education expenses than the state of Florida. That is the main cause of failing schools. The other parts of the cause are long-standing issues of racism in our curriculum, which has been addressed, but is still being weeded out. Other things have to do with the socioeconomic challenges of parents, many of them single parents, working more than one job and simply not having the ability to be involved in their child's education. Lack of transportation. How can you participate in school if you can't get there? These and other challenges can be met if we start doing a better job of meeting our commitment under the Florida Constitution of fully funding education. The second question about the constitutional requirement of balancing our state's budget. Yes, we must deliver, as legislators, we must deliver a balanced budget by the close of session so that the governor can approve it. That is our only obligation under the law. The other thousands of bills are produced by different legislators and by our corporate overlords like the American Legislative Exchange Council and Americans for Prosperity. The fact is because we have term limits in the state of Florida, many of our legislators don't have the wherewithal to write bills. Therefore, they depend on their lobbyists to write the bills and we just simply rubber stamp them. If elected, I will not be doing that. I will be writing bills. I will be amending bills. As a Democrat, I know we're in the minority this coming session, so it will be hard to get a bill passed by the Democrats. But that should not stop us. We're still part of this state. We still represent our constituents, and we will still be a voice to be dealt with, to be reckoned with.